Let's say you want to make some custom tags with names on it like this. Well, you could really easily do it with Blender and I'll show you exactly how. So here we have our default cube. The first thing we want to do is rescale the cube to the size of the tags. So just go up here to the scale tool and we could just drag these handles, pull it down like so. And we can pull this one like this. And there we have the basic shape of the tag. But the first thing we have to do is go to object and go to uh, apply and apply the scale. Anytime you change the scale of an object, just make sure to go to object and apply the scale. That way uh, you don't have any problems when you're doing other stuff with the, with the shape in the future. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of make it similar to these tags here. So let's select on uh, our shape and then let's go to uh, edit mode. So go up here and go to edit mode. And now let's say we want to round the corners off a little bit. We could go to the edge selection mode right here and we could go to bevel right there. And then we want to select on the two edges that we want to bevel and just kind of go like that. And before you click anything else, you could always go into here. And if you want to round it off, you could go and type in, I don't know, maybe 24 and just click anywhere else. Now we have it rounded there. And then maybe on this side, we want them to be square. So we could select on these two edges and you could pull this handle. And now we have kind of our tag shape. Okay, so now that we have the shape of our tag, let's go back into object mode. And let's go ahead and create the text. So to do that, we'll just go to add and add some text. And there's our text right there. So we'll need to uh, rotate it. And you can either go up here and go to rotate or you can press N on the keyboard to open up the uh, object properties. And we can just rotate it here uh, with more precision. So we can type in 90. And then there we have our object, our text rotated 90 degrees. And we can move the text like so, and then go ahead and scale it up as well. Just drag on that white circle and you can scale the text. So to change the text, press tab. Um, that'll go into edit mode or we could just switch here how we did before between object and edit mode or the keyboard shortcut is tab and go into edit mode and let's delete that and let's type in our name. And you can't really see it because it's right on the other object. Uh, so you press tab again, you can see it. But if we moved the text up just a little bit, like so, and then we go, well, it's still a little bit hard to see it. Actually, yeah, it's underneath it. So let me go back into object mode, move it up even higher. Now we are above it. So we should be able to see it now. Yeah, there we go. So now we can see it. Um, I'll press seven, oops. Go back into object mode, I'll press seven to go to top view. And if it doesn't work for you, go to edit preferences and go to input and click emulate numpad. That way you can press seven to go to the top view. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this text into position. You can move it right here. And now you can see the tag is too long. So we can select on the tag, press tab, and then click on x-ray mode right here and then click on this button here to select the vertices. And we can select all of these vertices, go to the move tool. And I know this is a lot of steps here, but if you practice uh, and if you, you'll get used to this after a while, um, but there are a lot of buttons and a lot of steps. So there we go. Now we've just selected all of these. And the reason I went into x-ray mode is that way we, we could select the, the points or the vertices on the bottom. So if I didn't do that, and I try to select them, you'll see it only selected the top vertices. And if we move that, it'll mess it up. Press Control Z. So with X-ray mode on, you can select the vertices that are behind or not visible usually. Okay, so that's looking good. So now we've edited the tag to fit our text. Let's go back into object mode. And let's go ahead and extrude or make this text 3D. Because right now it's just a text object and we have to convert it to a mesh. So now that we have the text selected, go to, actually before we do that, if you want to change the font, select your text and go to the text uh, properties panel here 
and you could click this drop down for the font and you could change the regular font by clicking on this folder here and you have to navigate to your font folder on your computer. So on a Mac, it's under your user library fonts. And these are all the custom fonts that I have downloaded. So you can download free fonts on websites like, I think it's Da Font or 1001 free fonts. You can just Google free fonts and you can find a bunch like this. Uh, my buddy, uh, Ninao Brand, designed these two fonts here. So he has a lot of cool fonts as well on his website. Uh, but I think, let's go ahead and do this one here. It's kind of the uh, Mr. Beast font. So let's select that one, or I'm going to select that one, and click Open Font, and you can see the font has changed. But now my tag is too long once again. So I'll select the tag, go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab, and then select this. Make sure I have the Move tool selected, and I can just drag this like so. Press Tab again to go back into Object Mode. And now we can make this 2D text object 3D. So select on your text and go to Object, and then go down to Convert, and we're converting it from the text object, which is a curve, to a mesh. So once you do that, uh, you'll see up here, it now has this little icon, which means it's now a mesh. So I press Control Z, you'll see right here, this object, our text object, was a text object, and then we went to Object, Convert to Mesh, and now it is a mesh. So if we press Tab, you'll see, it looks like a mesh, and it's a pretty messy mesh, but it doesn't matter if we're just extruding it vertically. Uh, press A to select everything, to select all. And then now we could go to the Extrude tool right here, and then extrude it up to make it three-dimensional. And once you do that, press Tab to go back into Object Mode. And we still have the X-Ray Mode on, so let's turn that off. And now you can see the tag is looking pretty good. So let's select on this text here and we'll want to combine it with our uh, tag. So let's go ahead and move it down so it's going inside of it. And you want to make sure it's actually going, it's intersecting it, it has some sort of depth into it. Um, that way when we join them together, it won't cause any issues. So now let's select the tag and let's go to this blue wrench here. It's the modifiers property tab. And let's go to add modifier. And, oh, it looks like they changed it. Wait, what? Okay, <laughs> so I just opened up, this is now Blender 4.0, so they changed this. Um, it's now kind of organized differently. So go to Add Modifier. I guess you could just search uh, or edit. That's interesting. But um, So in Blender 4.0, the brand new version of Blender, go to Generate and go to Boolean. And then we will select Union to join the two objects and we'll select our text object. And now you can see it changed and they have joined it together. And you have to click this drop down here and then click apply. Okay, so now we have the objects joined together. Uh, so we have the text object still, or we should. Let's see right here, there it is. We could go ahead and delete that. So select on the text object, press X on your keyboard and then delete. And now we have our tag uh, that has our name on it. However, we'll want to uh, add a hole right here so that way we can actually hang the tag on something. So let's go ahead and add a mesh and a cylinder and we could scale the cylinder down like so and then we can move the cylinder where we want to basically kind of drill a hole right here and let's select on our tag, go back to add modifier, generate, boolean, and this time we're going to select Difference. This will subtract the cylinder and select on the cylinder. And now we've cut a hole. Don't forget to click the drop down and apply. And then we could select on the cylinder, press X to delete, and then press delete. And now we have a really cool looking tag. So I'm just going to make sure I delete these images that I simply just dragged onto uh, Blender when I was in top view. Click delete. So now we have our tag, and to export the tag for 3D printing, go to File, go to Export, and then click on STL. So now we'll want to slice the tag. So here I am in my Bamboo Lab slicer, and I'm going to be printing it on my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. It's one of the most affordable multicolor 3D printers. I believe it's uh, $499 or $449, I forget which price it is right now. 
Um, so I'm going to switch to the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini uh, combo because uh, it has the AMS light, the multicolor unit. Uh, AMS stands for Automatic Material System. And I'm going to drag my STL into here, and it says it's too small. Okay, so I haven't set up my units in Blender. Um, would you like to scale to millimeters? Uh, sure. So that looks good right there. Um, the tag is currently, let's see how big it is. It is 50 by 155. That's pretty good. I think it might be a little bit too thick, so I'm just going to change the scale in the Z direction to five. It doesn't have to be quite as tall. Okay, so now how do we make this multicolor in our slicer? Well, what we could do is we could select our object and go to the paint tool and make sure you have two colors set up. You could just add another uh, filament spool kind of like this. I technically have four on the Bamboo Lab, um, the AMS light. And now let's make the text here, let's make it black. And there's multiple ways you could do it. You could use the fill tool, you could color it with the circle or the sphere or the triangle, but I'm going to use the uh, height range. And I'm gonna go sideways like this. And then if I just click, actually I'm gonna change the range higher so it's a little bit easier. Zoom in. Now I could just select it like so. And there we have all of the text is now uh, uh, black. Okay, so there we go. So now we have it set to two colors and you can see a little purge tower right here as well. Now all you have to do is click slice plate and it should take about 37 minutes. That's not too bad. And then when you go ahead and click print plate, all you have to do is select your printer and make sure that the uh, AMS colors match the colors that you have. So I have to go to my printer and check to make sure everything matches and then go ahead and click send. All right, so about 37 minutes later, here is the finished print. You can see it already self-released from the PEI build plate and the quality also looks really good. So that's how you could create a custom name tag in Blender. My name is Steven, the creator of 3D Printer Academy and thanks for watching. Check out all the links in the description for more information.